Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Joe Gannon and I create weekly videos to help you to maximize your LinkedIn content. Today's video, I'm going to be revising a previous video I made on how to make LinkedIn carousel posts. Now I tend to use Canva and it's a much more efficient way. It's faster and again, it's a free tool. With LinkedIn's latest algorithm change, we know about dwell time. So LinkedIn now measures the quality of content based on how long someone stays on that content for. So naturally, if you create video content, if you create carousels, if you create longer text posts, these will keep people on your content for longer. So if someone's scrolling through their feeds and they stop at your carousel and they start to swipe through it, you're signaling to LinkedIn that this is a high quality bit of content and that will get more engagement. So let's now jump into Canva and I'll walk you through how to create a carousel using this free tool. As you can see here from the engagement and from the view figures, we've got two carousels and at this time approximately had about 1,000, 1,500 uh, connections. So as you can see, I'm actually getting the engagement is actually three times the amount of people that I actually had in my network. So this is the carousel that I first made in the first video on YouTube. And we're gonna look at how to replicate this in a much more efficient way using Canva. We're gonna straight away go into create design and we're gonna use custom dimensions 1080 by 1080, which gives us our social media square, which is the sort of dimensions you wanna use across social media if you're creating different bits of content. So to kind of copy the design I had previously, we obviously had an orange background. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Canva, you can upload photos and videos. You can browse their stock photos as well and you have elements like icons. You can add your text here and you can also choose different backgrounds. So we're gonna go straight into backgrounds to kind of get our base layer. So there's lots of different backgrounds you can do. I like to kind of use a gradient. So just kind of like this one here, which you can select. And yeah, I'm gonna use this one here, which I've jumped in before. Now you might have a brand color, you might not. So I do kind of have an orange that I like to use. But for the kind of purpose of this video, let's just use the kind of custom orange that we're given here. So you can do lots of different things. You can choose different effects. You can uh, filter the colors. You can adjust the image. If it was an image, you can kind of adjust it. You can crop it. We don't really need to do any of that at all. Um, if you have a gradient here, you can flip it horizontally or vertical to choose where the lighter part goes and where the darker part goes. So let's go with that. And then I'm gonna go for capital letters. So 10 ways to get more things done. So here you can choose your font. So again, I kind of have brand assets that I like to use and feel free to use fonts like this. You can also go onto Google and download fonts onto your computer and then they will appear here as well. So I'm gonna use PT Sans and I'm gonna go for white text and I'm gonna make it bold. So we're gonna make it bold at the top and we're gonna go for white text. And as I'm just copying my previous design to show you how it's faster, I'm gonna copy what the style was. So I had this slightly to the left here and I think it was central or just above central as well. So all you have to do is click on the text there to kind of alter that. I'm gonna go into uploads and we're gonna select my logo and we're gonna just drop that into the bottom. So not too large, but big enough that you can see it about there, maybe just above. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab text again, or you could already grab the text you've already created so you know it's in the same font. And here I'm just gonna write my name in capital letters and I'm gonna reduce that size. So you can do that at the top here, or you can actually grab it and reduce it like this. And then we're gonna put this at the bottom here. So we're just gonna make that black actually to be more subtle. Okay, cool, so already it's starting to look branded, it's starting to look good. That's kind of the branding that I had, and then we had images. So in the first video I showed you guys, I used emojis. I'd just get a text box like that, I'd go to the top of my Mac and I'd use emoji and symbols to bring up emojis. But with Canva, if you use emojis and download the asset, the emojis don't appear, so it's actually best to use their versions of emojis, which we have under elements, or it might be photos, one of the two. So I'm gonna go for a checklist because my document is about 10 ways to get more things done. And then we're gonna find a checklist which we like the look of. So this one looks cool to me. It's a nice graphic, it's a vector file, which means if you make it bigger, it kind of keeps this file. Alternatively, you can use a website called Pixel True, and you can find some really nice vectors and illustrations here. And also you can use unsplash.com. So this is already looking very similar to the design I had at the start. And as you can see, if you're kind of scrolling through your feed, you're gonna be more impressed with content like this as it's gonna stand out. To make this really quick now, we're gonna just duplicate this slide, which gives us a second version. So now we've duplicated the slide, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the photo, the other half of it slightly overlap overlapping, but we're gonna have it overlapping here. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it. And then we're gonna just drag it along until the image matches up with what the previous slide was. Super simple, and then we're gonna delete this image. So on my previous carousel, we then started to have stuff uh, centralized, 
and we had one out of 10, and then I started to list what my 10 ways of getting more things done are. And as you can see there, we're gonna copy the same sort of format where we're gonna have an image and it's gonna overlap. But what I like to do is I like to make the most of this space at the top and at the bottom, so we can allow the text to be big in the screen in the middle. And then we're gonna just have it at the top here, and we're gonna just sort the size out very easily, and we're gonna have it overlapping at the top again. And then again, I won't show you all of the slides, but we're gonna hit duplicate at the top, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna delete this previous one, copy this one over, and then have it at the top. I'm gonna just jump out now and kind of show you the finished carousel, because all I'm doing is simply going into each slide now, changing this text here, and then changing this text here. To get these arrows, all I had to do was go onto elements, and we just looked at different shapes. So we just typed in arrows, very simply, and we have all of these different types of arrows to use. So I think I used this one, and I just changed the, the color here to white. And I definitely recommend you have arrows because it really helps to encourage people to kind of click through the document. And yeah, just to kind of show you the rest of the slides. So feel free to copy this design. Uh, change the spacing a bit, move this a bit more to the left. And then we have the checklist overlapping. I went for a different image here, and then this overlaps here. I have equivalents of the emojis on canvas. So if you type in arm here, I've got all these different ones. If you type in muscle, I got this graphic from here, which was this one. They're equivalent of the emojis. And then we just kind of go through and it's the same sort of thing. So this is quite fun to scroll through. And now I've shown you the design. The last thing to kind of show you guys is example of the last slide. So once you've got people to the end of your carousel, you don't want them to kind of think, well, that was great, but now what? And I don't want them to kind of just click off after consuming the information. I want to tell them to do something. I want to give them a call to action. So here, my main purpose here is to get people to comment and tell me other ways that they like to get things done, other productivity tools. Did they find this useful? So I've got an image of me here and I'll show you how to kind of create these ones in a second and I've essentially just moved my logo over to the side. So I'm in the middle, smiley picture of me, and potentially here though, you could have the URL for your personal blog or for your website. But I definitely like to have a picture of me and to be more personal in saying, what would you add? Asking people a question to really encourage comments. And obviously comments is how our content can be shown to other people. So now I'm just gonna show you how to remove the background of any image. So Canva do offer this on the Canva Pro plan, but we don't need to use that. There's a great website here called remove.bg. So if you're creating a new account on remove.bg, you do have one credit available to you. This image here was just on their free plan. I ran out of credits and I downloaded it as a lower res. But as this is 1080 by 1080 and the image isn't too big, you can't really tell about the quality. I even got this little strand of hair here um, and it's removed the background in between it. So that's a really good one to use. Lots of people use this for YouTube thumbnails. What we need to do now is to download it as a PDF. So we're gonna go up to the top here we're gonna choose the file type and we're gonna just choose PDF. I think PDF standard is fine. And you're gonna download all of the pages to your laptop or computer. So to upload the document onto LinkedIn, all we need to do is hit start a post and then we just add the document here. So we click on this and we choose our file. So carousel post, you're gonna have three lines before the carousel appears. So I like to kind of encourage people to swipe through and to have an arrow to kind of show people to kind of click more and read the rest of the text here. So now you can see how the carousel is gonna look and you can kind of flick through it just to check your design is looking good. So let's flick through. As you can see, it looks good, it looks interactive and it's encouraging people to post. And then we have the arrow at the end, encouraging people to get to the CTA, which is let me know what you think about this. Just select post and your carousel document will go out into the world of LinkedIn. On my YouTube channel, I really wanna give you guys resources. So I have a video on how to have 100 ideas and also I have a video where you can download my free LinkedIn content calendar. I really hope the videos on my channel are useful for you and please subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I'll see you guys in the next video.